good morning. As always, it's nice to have you here with us today. And today is a little bit different. Uh, first of all, for all of you fathers out there, happy Father's Day. But it's different in a different way as well. And that is, uh, in our diocese, you know, since this is the year of St. Joseph, our bishop has decreed that uh, this weekend we would honor St. Joseph. And so the Mass will be a Mass devoted, well, to him. Anyway, so let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that by St. Joseph's intercession, your Church may constantly watch over the unfolding of the mysteries of human salvation, whose beginnings you entrusted to his faithful care, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. The Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go tell my servant David, when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm, and I will make his royal throne firm forever. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm is the son of David will live forever. The son, the son of, of David, David will, will live, live forever. forever. The promises of the Lord I will sing forever forever. Through all generations, my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness, for you have said, My kindness is established forever. In heaven, you have confirmed your faithfulness. The Son, the Son of, of David, David will live, live forever. forever. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David, my servant, forever will I confirm your posterity and establish your throne for all generations. The, the son, son of David, David will live forever. forever. He shall say of me, you are my father, my God, the rock, my savior. Forever I will maintain my kindness toward him. My covenant with him stands firm. The, the son, son of, of David, David will live forever. forever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, 
it was not through the law that the promise was made to Abraham and his descendants that he would inherit the world, but through the righteousness that comes through faith. For this reason, it depends on faith, so that it may be a gift, and the promise may be guaranteed to all his descendants, not to those who only adhere to the law, but to those who follow the faith of Abraham, who is the father of all of us. As it is written, I have made you father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into being what does not exist. He believed, hoping against hope, that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said. Thus shall your descendants be. That is why it was credited to him as righteousness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Blessed are those who dwell in your house, O Lord. They never cease to praise you. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jacob was the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. Of her was born Jesus, who is called the Christ. Now this is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother, Mary, was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home, for it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and took his wife into his home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As I mentioned at the beginning of Mass today in our diocese, this is a special celebration for, or in honor of St. Joseph. And it's kind of obvious that the bishop picked this day because it is also Father's Day. And so we need to make sure that we give some thought to St. Joseph, who was the foster father of Jesus, and what made him so special, what made him so wonderful. And you know, if you read your way through the Gospels, you'll see that there isn't a whole lot of information on Joseph, but the information that is there tells us something about the character of this wonderful man. So for instance, in today's Gospel, he found out that Mary was going to have a baby. and But it was before they were living as husband and wife. So all he could assume was that she had been unfaithful. And you can imagine how he must have felt. He must have felt anger. He must have felt some terrible sense of betrayal. He must have felt heartbroken. There must have been a terrible feeling of sadness. And so that, of course, was going to end that betrothal and that relationship. And it's said, though, 
uh, he was unwilling to expose her to shame and so decided to divorce her quietly. And that's an important fact because the Mosaic law was fairly severe when questions of adultery came up. And so if he would have divorced her publicly, uh, there's a very real chance that after she had her baby, her life would have been forfeit. And, uh, but he showed compassion, he showed mercy, he showed some sense of self-restraint. And that is, it, it speaks to the, the sort of character he had. And this is before he had a talk with the angel. And so we need to make sure that when we look at St. Joseph, and we say, well, what do we admire about him? Well, even in one of life's darkest moments, one of life's angriest moments, one of life's saddest moments, there was still some sense of compassion, some sense of mercy, some sense of self-control. And we need to think about that. Secondly, when that was still the plan, he had this dream. And in the dream, the angel came to him and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home, for it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. And so what did he do? He got up and he did as God commanded. He took Mary into his home. And that wasn't an isolated incident for Joseph. Year, well, a while later, a year or two later, uh, when King Herod decided or had heard that the newborn king had been born in Bethlehem, he decided that all the babies there needed to be destroyed, all the males. And so Joseph, again, had a dream. And in the dream, the angel said to him, the Lord God says, take your wife and your son and flee to Egypt. And so what did he do? He got up and he fled to Egypt with Mary and Jesus. And uh, again, that's somebody who we can admire. When God spoke, Joseph listened. Now, we don't hear too much more of him other than that. Our imagination does need to fill in all the blanks, but we can imagine what sort of man he was uh, from that limited information and just from thinking about what kind of foster father would God want for his son, what sort of husband would the Lord want for the Blessed Mother. And so what we see is, or the picture we have is the picture of somebody who was kind and honest, somebody who understood that God had a plan, somebody who took care or took his responsibilities to his wife and his son uh, rather seriously. And that kind of lets us know how we ought to be. Because whether we're fathers or not, uh, we all have this group of people who we love, generally our family. But what we need to understand is that like Joseph, in those difficult moments, we have to react and act with understanding. We have to show self-restraint. People are going to fail us and we have to be compassionate and merciful. Like Joseph, we're supposed to be asking the question, well, what does God want? How should I be acting? How should I be living? And like Saint Joseph, we need to understand that our lives, in a sense, aren't our own, but instead they belong to the people we love and those people need our service, our devotion, our care and concern. And if every father would live this way, if every Christian would live this way, our families would be so much happier and our families would be so much holier and we ourselves would all be living in a very Christian way, because I think that the life of St. Joseph, that life that is modeled on service, that life that is modeled on compassion and self-restraint, that life that belonged to the Lord and belonged to Jesus and belonged to the Blessed Mother, uh, is a good model of how any Christian, not just fathers, could live. And so make sure that you're thinking about those things as you go through your days. Next time you're faced with some situation in which you're rightfully and righteously angry, show some compassion and so show some mercy and show some self-restraint. Next time you have a great decision to make, ask, God, what should I do here? And who knows, you might have a life that more closely mirrors that of St. Joseph, and it would be a wonderful thing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
And now let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now let us bring our prayers and petitions before God, our Almighty Father. For the Church, may the Lord protect her from all evil as she testifies to the good news of Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have authority over others, may God grant them grace in leading with understanding and justice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who feel burdened by the storms in their lives, may the hope of Christ bring them peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the sick and the dying in this community of faith, and for those who love them, may God grant them strength. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Robert W. Allen, for whom this Mass is being offered, and for all those who have died, May they rejoice in the presence of God and his eternal kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask that you hear our prayers offered in faith and trust. We ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who has humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. From the spirit and the heart, we accept by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquities. Cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. We pray, O Lord, that just as St. Joseph served with loving care your only begotten Son, born of the Virgin Mary, so we may be worthy to minister with a pure heart at your altar through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, 
our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and on the solemnity of St. Joseph, to give you fitting praise, to glorify you and bless you. For this just man was given by you as a spouse to the Virgin Mother of God, and set as a wise and faithful servant in charge of your household, to watch like a father over your only begotten Son, who was conceived by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Lawrence, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Robert Allen, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. And now let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Since we cannot have regular communion together, please recite with me this prayer so that we can have spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot receive you at this moment sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Defend with unfailing protection, O Lord, we pray, the family you have nourished with food from this altar, as they rejoice at the solemnity of St. Joseph, and graciously keep safe your gifts among them, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Well, as always, I'd like to thank you for being here with us today. Uh, There is one little announcement, and that is this week I'll be heading to the Emmaus Convocation, and that is a meeting of all the priests from our diocese, the Diocese of Erie, and uh, we'll get together Monday and stay together until Thursday, and we'll have some educational experiences, some uh, prayer time and mass time together, and uh, sometimes just having a good time being in each other's company. So it should be a nice week, but keep me, our bishop, and all our priests in your prayers, and I'll see you next weekend. But thanks again, and have a good week.